Greetings, dear ones. I am Kryon of Magnetic Service. It is a safe place. A place where there are no energies that would be inappropriate that would come before you. Every single human in the room is known. And there is an attitude of spirit that presents itself to the individual. An attitude of thanks. An attitude of love. My partner sits on a stage so that in three dimensions you may see him. Spirit is not on a stage. Spirit is with you. And so the words that I have this day are being spoken within you simultaneous. Those pieces and the parts of you which are quantum. And it's personal, all of it. The information this evening will be that which is informative. And tomorrow, energetic. And so this is about the way things work. This is about energies and information and physics and all for you. But before we begin, we say this, have you figured out yet why we're even here? Over 20 years ago, my partner sat in a chair and asked this question. What for? Why me? Why now? And we put before him the same thing I will put before you. Old souls are on this planet on purpose as a family. There is no accident that you are here. You sit in the chair today, some of you only recently realizing you were coming to the meeting. I know who's here. Perhaps to feel the energy of this day and this evening and perhaps even tomorrow. And perhaps for the first time you will feel as part of this collective less individual and more part of the plan of why you agreed to be here. Even your parents agreed with you before they came in to allow for you to be born. Your agreement with them was not to be appreciated, liked, even loved. It was to be born. On the other side of the veil, they knew it and you knew it and you're here because of it. They knew that it was not their time. But it would be yours. They saw the potentials just as spirit did of what might take place in 2012. And you're here as proof. The plan is bigger than you think. I would like to talk about grids. I'm going to give you a channel, not an endurance channel, one that is about the three grids. It's not a summary, for there's always new information, but it's the first time we put these things together in this way for an entire channeling session. I want to explain them to you. I want you to think about them. I want you to start putting together these things and understanding Everything around you exists for you. You don't walk around surviving as a victim in a world that is filled with other victims. At the beck and the call of nature and the forces of politics. That's not who you are. You're the chosen one. 
the ones we knew who would come here old soul and start planting the seeds of light and those things called nature and politics oh you live with them but you're not really part of them for well, they're in 3D and they're part of the culture that you live in and perhaps the world that you think you are in but all of them are 3D and the grids are not let me introduce you to real reality. The bigger picture, the things that are invisible, the things you cannot see, what are there energet energetically. We spoke of three grids on the planet. There are more, but the three major ones that we teach about, the magnetic grid, this was the first that you heard of. I am crying on the magnetic master. You learn today why. <laughs> the second one we talked about was the crystalline grid. We explained what it did, why it was there. We're going to do more today. And the third grid is Gaia, the grid of life. And so I'm going to give them to you and explain them in ways you perhaps have not heard before. And we're going to start the last first. The grid which is Gaia. One of the three. We use the three constantly. For this is a catalytic number. That is to say it has energy beyond itself. When the catalyst, whether it is a number or a chemical, is combined with other numbers or chemicals, they become greater than the source. We have spoken of the third language. That means a language which is higher and above the one you're hearing in 3D. You'll see the threes everywhere. Gaia, the crystalline, and the magnetics are three in one. There is not one which is higher or lower than the other or takes precedent from the other. They exist in a soup, the three in one. But I take them apart for your examination, but I tell you they're interactive. You cannot separate them. One involves in the other, is entangled with the other. The Gaia grid is the grid of life. It is the Akash. Gaia holds the Akash inside her. Life hold the Akash inside it. Therefore, any life on Gaia has its own Akash record. Yours is in your DNA. It is also in a cave of creation, which is in Gaia. The grid of Gaia is all about life on the planet of all kinds. You might even say that Gaia is that which sees and is responsible for regulating that which is coming and going to the planet. You pass through the Gaia grid, coming and going. Gaia is the closest grid you have to you. It is the first thing that the indigenous see, worship, know about. The indigenous are overwhelmed with the study and the worship of their ancestors with life. That's Gaia. They know about that which is directional, the east, the west, the south, the north. They have ceremonies, lines of influence. That's Gaia. They gave energy to the growth of the crops, life. That's Gaia. And so Gaia becomes the one that you see first. You may even call it Mother Nature. But upon Gaia, there are some other things that you should know. Interwoven in what we call the crystalline and the magnetics, there are portals. Energies which sit upon, seemingly, Gaia, for they're on the land. And you might say that they are a Gaia attribute, a 
portal here, a portal there. And in a moment I'll show you why they're not. They belong to another grid. Now let me tell you about the consciousness of Gaia. The actual consciousness of Gaia, alive, of the earth, is all about humanity. Four billion years ago, if you ask Gaia what is going on, Gaia would say we're preparing for humans. One billion years ago, the earth cools, and you would ask Gaia what is going on, she would say we're preparing for humans. Fifty million years ago, if you ask Gaia what is going on, she would say, it's eminent. They will be arriving shortly. A few thousand years ago, she would say, and now they're here. Again, I want to present a puzzle to you. It was Gaia who regulated the timing of humanity. Responsible for when you showed up. I didn't say evolution, did I? How long ago was it that you had large mammals on the earth and how many humans were around building cities at that time? Doesn't it seem odd to you that it took four billion years <laughs> for you to arrive? Could it be that there was a grander plan and that Gaia knew something? Being connected as she is to spirit. And the answer is yes. Could it be that humanity is the new kid on the block in the universe? And the answer is yes. With the age of the universe, and the age of your galaxy, did it ever occur to you that there might be civilizations as grand as yours, as intelligent as yours, that are millions of years old? <laughs> there should be. And there is. You were delayed on purpose. Did you know that there were at least four starts of life on the planet? guy put them all to rest. The final one, it got photosynthesis. The other ones didn't. Talk to a biologist about this. All of these things should add up to the solving of a puzzle that would say, why now? Why did it take so long when the earth could have supported humanity millions of years ago? Why now? There were two reasons. The first was to let your solar system settle down. That is to say all of the rocks that are flying around would finally find their orbits and stop plowing into you. Because <laughs> that wouldn't serve humanity at all. Any more than it served the dinosaurs. Do you see what I'm saying? The evolution of mankind was presented exactly when it should have been and aligned exactly when the Pleiadeans would visit. Ready you were, not too advanced, not too shallow, just right. And that was the second reason. For the planet has been seeded, and this day you look and you know why. The planet is in shift, it's going to change, dear ones. Two generations from now, you're going to look back and something will occur to you. There hasn't been a world war. In fact, there hasn't been a big war of any kind. And you'll wonder what happened and you'll be glad for it, but you won't have figured it out. Consciousness shift is at hand. We told you 20 years ago it would be, it's here. You're just beginning to see it. This earth is starting to repair itself. Slow it will be, generations must come and go, those who hate must leave, and they will. 
through natural causes, eventually replaced by those who will not hate. And sometimes that's the only solution. For there will be humans in groups who are very stubborn about this and will claim the old energy right to the end. Gaia. This is what Gaia has done for you. Orchestrated the timing of humanity. Put life on the planet for you to eat. Going through the cycle right now so that it will be refreshed so you can continue that. This is the one you see every day. Can you see it as alive? In your sleep, could you say thank you, Gaia, for being with me, for loving me? And you'd be accurate and true. There is a consciousness of this planet. The ancestors knew it. You cannot ignore it. And it exists for you. The crystalline grid is the most difficult to explain. It is a metaphoric grid. You cannot see it. Now you cannot see the Gaia grid either, but you can see Gaia. You can honor the plants, the trees, the animals, the oceans, the seas that are inland. You can marvel at the beauty. The crystalline sits there invisible doing its job and it's profound. You can feel it, but you can't see it. We have said crystalline grid. This is a metaphor. What is it that you know about substances crystalline? The only rock, the part of the earth, which is Gaia, on the planet that can hold a vibration is crystal. So we have called this the crystalline grid so that you would have an inkling of what it does. It holds vibration. It does more than that. It remembers. Here's a system that I have talked about before, but perhaps not in this complexity. Everything you do, old soul, is recorded on the crystalline grid. It remembers your life. Every footstep is recorded. And it's a non-linear process. We spoke of this just recently in another continent. That is to say that the crystalline grid does not remember things equally. There are certain things it remembers with, shall we say, greater strength than not. There are battlefields close by. And you can go stand in them and those of you who feel things will say, this was a place of death. Much happened here. Let me ask you, who are you talking to? <laughs> it's the crystalline. Up to this point in your human existence, the crystalline grid has remembered that which is war, that which was healing, and that which was compassion in fairly equal ways. And you can go to places on the planet and feel the mother energy. That's the crystalline. Something happened there. You can go to places on the planet that are battlefields and feel that. On this crystalline area where you are now, there wasn't really much that happened. Only one civilization, not much. It's fresher. If you go to Europe, you can stand where there are as many as 30 to 40 civilizations, battles, death in the millions. It's hard to channel there, dear ones. Ask, ask my partner. Because the energy is not commensurate with a portal that opens as fully as it needs to for channeling. This is the crystalline at its best. What humans did, it remembers. Now I would like to tell you 
some things about the crystalline grid that we have not talked about much. Number one, if it's where human did things, that means most of the crystalline remembrance is on the land. Some things took place that were later covered by water and these are felt still while on the water. But over 80% of all crystalline remembrances are on land. So you're not discovering a lot of portals on the water. Now you may have things you wonder about such as the Bermuda Triangle which is water it has nothing to do with a crystalline grid. We haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> That's magnetics. No, we are talking about what you feel when you stand in certain places, dear one. Where the old soul resounds with the land. That's the crystalline that they're resounding with. We have told you that the crystalline grid is responsible for what you say are ghosts. And as proof of this, we tell you that you can interview someone who is passed over because that which is their essence is still on the crystalline grid. If you have a seance and call on Aunt Martha, she'll be there. But only the Aunt Martha's tape plays. That is to say, that which was Aunt Martha on the earth stays, not where she is now. Let me give you an example, Aunt Martha. How are you? Fine. How are you? Fine. Aunt Martha, where is the treasure buried? <laughs> Three feet from the left of the oak tree. And she'll be right. Aunt Martha, what's it like on the other side of the veil? Fine, thank you. What's your day like over there? We love each other. Fine, thank you. You won't get any details because she's not there. Aunt Martha is only echoing what she was being taught by her church. You see what I'm saying? What is it the ghosts do over and over? They play a tape. Something happened in a house. They come down a stairway. It happens every night. And you go back and they come down a stairway. And you go back and they come down a stairway. The crystalline grid is the ultimate tape player. It'll play it and play it and play it. And where there were profundities, it'll play it stronger. So strong that you can actually measure it with magnetics, with temperature. Because it's that real. It does not represent entities from the other side or entities who are trapped. It is simply a recording. A recording in energy. And some can see it happen repeatedly over and over. This is the crystalline. Now let me tell you what's happening. As the earth shifts its energy, as Gaia also shifts her energy, as the Kundalini moves southward, it recalibrates all the grids. Suddenly, this grid that was crystalline, that remembers things equally, will be nonlinear. And that is to say, suddenly the things that were, as you would say, darker, will not be as remembered keenly as the things which are lighter. Now my partner, you didn't do a very good job with that, so I'm going to ask you to back up and try again. The crystalline grid is being aligned for compassion. Where there is compassion, there will be energy that everyone can feel. Where there is darkness and war and death, there will be less energy than ever before. You'll be able to walk over places that used to disturb you before, and the crystalline grid will be quiet. And you'll go to places where there were healings and it'll soar. Where there is appreciation for God and love, there will be portals. Even the smallest healing will be noticed grandly. The realignment of the grid 
is the alignment to the mother energy. We call it Mother Earth. It's about time it responded accordingly. So the remembrance factor of the physics of the crystalline is changing. And what that's going to do is that there's going to be less hatred remembrance to fuel the fires of those who sit in histories of hatred. It's not going to affect them as much and the next generation in certain places on this earth are simply not going to feel it and they're not going to cooperate anymore. With hate and war And the religious belief systems of this planet are going to soften. You're going to see even in the West a realignment of what you call Catholicism. Within one to two generations this church will change. And the love of Christ will be paramount as it should be. But the rules around the old energy will start to crumble. Church is not going away, dear ones. It doesn't have to go away, dear ones. Do not judge what you think is correct and not correct on this planet for any other human being but yourself. For some need the organization where they go and report in a linear fashion and feel the love of God where they sing the songs and have the healings that you can have here and they are comfortable with this and they are joiners and there is no thing wrong with that so if you can visualize something for this grand church visualize purity appropriateness and change and they will have a chance to do that because the crystalline of remembrance is starting to move when human beings live on the crystalline grid in certain places, it feeds them every day with what has taken place there. Can you see what that might do? If the grid starts to remember things more profound that are beautiful than ugly, that's a recalibration even of the grid. There is no symmetry on the crystalline grid. Humans don't work in symmetrical ways. So if you start drawing lines around these places, you're not going to find that they spell something. There's not going to be a mystery solved. No puzzle from one to the other. It's what humans did in certain places that create the patterning of the grid. And now we get to the magnetic. The magnetic grid, if you could say what is it about, it is communications. Not all planets have a magnetic field. It requires planets that have not cooled yet completely to have a magnetic field. Not all magnetic fields have poles which are north and south. So it's not the same everywhere. Yours is carefully designed. We've told you some anomalies about the magnetic field that you should know. We have cited things about magnetics that you should know. The first and foremost is that it is necessary for life. If you change the magnetics of the planet too much, life will change. If you decide to go to another planet on a very long voyage, you must take the magnetic field with you. You must simulate as much as possible what you have here and surround yourself with it so your biology thinks it's the same. There will be tests of this and you'll see. But that's not what it's for. You get into physics dear ones and there are not all those interested in physics but let me tell you something. This planet is being communicated with constantly and not by necessarily others out there like you. We are talking about energies of the galaxy. 
we're talking about physics with an attitude we're talking about things that are magnetic and beyond quantum things that literally speak to this planet as though the galaxy were alive speaking to where you are and what you're doing if you've noticed carefully and perhaps you haven't even looked but the scientists know there's something dealing with magnetics that's new and is happening in your solar system that was never there before even the solar system is beginning to become recalibrated we told you that the Sun is involved greatly it has something called the heliosphere the magnetic field of the Sun energy which is blasted out constantly has another name the solar wind which quantumly measures the planets fulcrum energy that is to say the planets around the Sun push and pull the Sun's core through what you would say is gravity the Sun being the mother of the solar system is very in tune where all the planets are for they constantly pull upon the Sun this is a quantum patterning of the Sun that is then transmitted to the earth through the solar wind intercepted by the magnetic field and transferred to you and you have a name for it astrology <laughs> it starts to explain birth signs it also starts to explain that no matter how you work the astrology even backwards even the Vedic it's the same thing and it's going to give you the same answers for it's the same patterns just a little upside down the magnetic grid is a communicator oh but there's more so the solar system talks to you you are literally patterned by it through the Sun in your DNA there are times on the planet that affect human consciousness full moons void moons retrogrades measurable they are in society by how much crime there is <laughs> how do you explain that it's about consciousness it comes and goes like the tide basically through what the solar system does all through the magnetic grid the magnetic grid of the planet is like an antenna that is universal but there's more you need magnetics for entanglement now if you were not part of the lecture earlier today you may not know what that is it's a quantum connection it is beyond the three dimensions and you need magnetics to create it and so the magnetic fields becomes part of an entanglement engine from a very far away place I'll give you two new things in physics one I have spoken of before so it doesn't get included in the two new ones I'll start with this one there's two missing laws of physics you will discover there are four now there should be six the two laws of physics which are missing is a strong and weak multi-dimensional state or force they work much like that in current physics only quantumly and it starts to explain things that you have not been able to understand or figure out in 3d two new things number one in astronomy those who look at the galaxies including this one don't understand why the stars move around the middle the way they do like they're pasted on a plate like a bicycle wheel whose spokes never move except together because they're hardwired to the rim that's the way the galaxy moves around the middle that's not Newtonian if you noticed it doesn't have anything to do with mass if you've noticed and it is not three-dimensional physics if you've noticed and every spiral galaxy does it 
If you look at Andromeda, it does it. If you look at the Milky Way, it does it. And I'll tell you why. Because you are entangled with the middle. That is to say, the middle of the galaxy contains something that you have called the potential of a singularity. It is not a black hole per se. It is a quantum event. It is a push-pull energy. You call it a black hole, we call it the twins. There is a push-pull quantum energy there, a strong and weak force. Physicists, listen to this channel. Perhaps this will lead to discovery of ideas. This galaxy is entangled. That is to say, whatever is happening in the middle is so strong with you, it rotates and you rotate with it. And what could it be in the middle? There's a portal there. And that's as far as we're going to go. A portal there. A grand one. It is not where you meet God. <laughs> it's something grander than that. Perhaps even there is a communication with something else. That was number one. Number two. Is it interesting that astronomers have to work the puzzle backwards to tell you that in order for the Big Bang to have happened, there has to be missing energy. And instead of saying there's missing energy, they say there has to be matter involved. And that matter, of course, is invisible and it's dark. And so in other, in other words, for things to happen the way they have happened, if you work the puzzle backwards, you will discover the only simulation that makes any sense is when you add in a whole bunch of things you don't understand. <laughs> and you call it dark matter. Well, it doesn't matter at all, dear ones, it's quantum energy. Quantum energy is not definable with three-dimensional attributes. And so we will just say it's quantum energy that pushes and pulls on the three-dimensional part. There's no such thing as dark matter. This is the missing puzzle. Physicists and astronomers, when you start understanding the push and the pull that created the universe that is part of this galaxy, you will see the strong and the weak multidimensional force that explains it all. It'll fall into the puzzle and the formulas will work. And then you will see the truth of it. Almost everything you're looking at is quantum. Not the small, but the very large. And then I beg you, biologists, to start looking inside. For as it is in the small and the large, it is in the human being. And you will start to see the miracle of quantum DNA. These are the three grids. The magnetic grid of your planet communicates with you constantly. And now, just before I go, I'll talk about your parents. No, no. Not the ones you think. There's Pleiadians in the room. And they're invisible. There's more and more of them all the time and they're coming out of the portals that are being released in 2012. Pleiadians don't have to have spaceships to get here. They're entangled with you and always have been because they're part of the universe. I'm giving you some information we have never described before. If you're in an entangled state, dear one, and you understand multidimensional, and you understand multidimensional physics, you're going to start understanding that teleportation is not something that is science fiction. Anything in an entangled state is part of itself. It can be in two places at the same time. There's Pleiadians in the room. You think they're here. How do you define here? <laughs> Is God here?
And if God is here, does that mean he's missing somewhere else? No. Is God in your house right now? Watching over your loved ones, if they're there? And the answer is yes. Is God here in this room with you right now? And the answer is yes. How can God be in two places at the same time? There's Pleiadians here. Thousands of years ago, they knew how to do this. It's not simply high science. It's part of spiritual awareness. The more spiritual aware this earth becomes, the higher scientifics it'll be given. And the more that it'll understand about peace. Those are your parents. The Pleiadians watch over this place. There's a mountain in California they're pouring out of it. You call it Chasta. There's a time capsule there, which is not really a time capsule at all. It's simply a portal for the Pleiadians. You stand on that mountain, you can hear him, you can see him. Lights flash. They come and they go. I want to tell you something. All in appropriateness and love, they are seeing what you're doing. They realize you made it. There's going to be a lot of activity on this planet. They're part of the magnetic grid. <laughs> Communications, that's how they do it. If your earth did not have the grid that Gaia put here, through the molten center of the earth that still moves and creates the engine of magnetics, they would never be able to have come. If you did not have the crystalline, there would be no remembrance. You would have no help. And this is what is starting to occur. For the light worker is starting to get help. And that's coming from the crystalline. Together they represent something that we have taught now for 20 years. The earth is changing. Consciousness is shifting. And the old souls are awakening. Blessed is the human being who starts to put this together. And understand that they are here not by accident but for a reason. Lighthouses each go from this place differently than you came, holding energies that you didn't have before you came, and live longer because of it. I am crying in love with humanity. In love with humanity. And so it is.